Welcome to the 28th edition of Make Pro Wrestling with Jesse again. I am your new Majestic Champion of the World, Tiger Height. And before we kind of get through this, so what happened was at Crown Jewel, the title became vacant. And then on Saturday, which I guess is yesterday, Bound for Glory, it became no longer vacant. Yes, uh, because that's kind of how that works. Yes. Anyway... Uh, let's talk about Crown Jewel. Yeah, blood money! Yeah! Um, I was incredibly disappointed that they did not have a cool, elaborate entrance, but... Oh, oh, cry. That's being very nitpicky. Oh, cry. And, and apparently now it's all... It, it's a pay-per-view that's congruent to... It, it's, it's, a, it's a canon pay-per-view. Let's yes. just call it what it is. It really is. Anyway, let's talk about probably the best match of the show by like a Oh, line. yes. Uh, Edge, Seth Rollins, Hell in a Cell. This... With the first female referee to ever officiate a match in Saudi Arabia. Yes, and she had to wear a bunch of crap because, you know, Saudi Arabia. Yay, inclusion. Yes, um... Wasn't it this match or was it the next match that had the be a star thing in Saudi Arabia and the irony was not lost upon us? <laughs> I have no idea. Do you remember that? It's yeah. Like, Wait. That was really funny. But anyway, uh, this match was awesome. They had put the uh, great drama, very well paced, a little long, I think, yeah. personally. But I thought overall... I'm really hoping that this rivalry is It has over. to be done. If it's not done, then they're ruining it. They're, they're over-egging the pudding. Exactly. I thought they were over-egging the pudding after SummerSlam. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I think a trilogy had to happen. I mean, I guess. It was great. Edge won with a curb stomp to Rollins, which I thought was a nice little tasty ending there. Yep. And Edge won. And I think he needed it more than Rollins. Rollins oh, yeah. Rollins did not need to win. Edge yeah. needed to win. So. Right. Hopefully, we'll move on from this rivalry. Obviously, we'll make pro wrestling with Jessica again because you know WWE will fuck it up. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, um, all right. Peanut Gallery, let's make this shit with Jessica again. Oh, my God. All right. So, with the Roman Reigns... Bro- we, we just talked about this. I kind of have an idea. It, it was... It, Paul Heyman makes a rivalry. Let's just keep doing whatever that is. I wouldn't have had the Usos interference. I would have just done something that shit like that. And without the Uso interference, it felt unnecessary. Oh, oh the Usos interference. I forgot, yeah, they, I they, forgot they, that the Usos yeah, interfered. Yeah, they, they, they had the double super kick, and then that, I'm like, I feel like it would have been a little more impactful if the Usos were not involved. Yeah. Just personally speaking. Yep. So we really talked we, we really, we really, about this. We really broke this down. I don't think I could have booked the match actually in the ring better than they did. Um, just the just the winner difference. Yeah. That's literally yeah. about it. Put it on the SmackDown person, please. Right. <laughs> two two people on Raw, you know, going for right. the SmackDown Women's Champion. Um. Again, I would have had I would have had a story different. The match itself was good. I wouldn't have done anything differently. Maybe, maybe a little, you know, Drew McIntyre aggression heel that would have been kind of neat. Yeah, maybe so showing some of those tendencies. Right. Let's let's start maybe sprinkling in some Uzi turning heel soon or ooh. Because there are rumors going around that mm-hmm. some superstars would be making some switches. Yep, and I think Drew McIntyre might be one of those guys yeah. that might do something like that. Right. And I feel like this would have been a great match to maybe integrate. How do people feel about maybe a Drew McIntyre heel turn? Mm-hmm. And I think that would have really added to the match. Because it's yeah. baby face, baby face. It's right. hard to really get into it. Right, it is. So um, that's just kind of what I would have done yep. with it. But, you know, overall it was fine. Yeah. I couldn't have booked this better. No, it was it was very well booked. It was very well booked. Yeah. WWE, wow. WWE actually booking something. Wow. Like that. That's weird as shit. I I we we, we I think I think we broke this down very adequately. We did, um, especially with that. I, here's my thing, because I believe um, it, it just needed a few more elements to really make it a grudge match, right? And then maybe um, with the hurt business getting involved, I would have done that just a little bit differently. But mm-hmm. um, you know. Other than that, I think we really broke this down really well to make this shit majestic. Oh again. yeah. And honestly, there, I mean, give this like another month and it would have been really good. Right. Well, they did, but they had Goldberg. All right. For a while. Well, this was pretty boring. It this was, was well, it was, well, it was again, very, it was very uninspiring match. It was a very, well, it was a very uninspiring tournament just in general. Right. Where was the specialty? Where was the emphasis on being the first Queen's crown? Right. Unfortunately, here's the thing with Crown Jewel. They do this all the fucking time. Right. And they did it with the, um, 
Uh, what was that uh, championship belt that Braun Strowman won? Oh, the um, the greatest uh, the greatest Royal Rumble thing, and then yeah. Braun Strowman was gonna hold this belt and defend it right. at these shows, right? Which would have been great, and we're like, wow, they actually have a belt. There has been money put into this. Right. The belt looked cool, right? And it would have been really really neat, but they didn't. And with the Queen's crown, I hate saying this, but I feel like it's going to be the same exact. Thing. Yep, it's going to go the same path as the Tarawick Trophy. Yep, the greatest, the greatest Royal Rumble bullshit that they or had. the 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 best in the world trophy. Yeah, the best in the world, the best tag team in the world trophy. Like all of that, none of that is going to exist. The Queen's crown is just another one of those. It's going to be another another novelty. I don't I don't want that to happen. If they really <laughs> wanted to do this, uh, push Zelina Vega to the moon and have her go for the title and make it right. look important. Make it make it seem like it's important. That, that's Obviously, what, that's what King of the Ring. But that's what made King of the Ring important. Right? It was that the winner them, got the world title opportunity, or they were pushed to the main event right. scene and they stayed there with Mabel, with Owen Hart, with Bret Hart, with all of these guys, with King Booker, with like, Steve Austin, with Steve Austin. Yeah, exactly. They were pushed, and if they are going to do this right, it's the first one, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. But I feel but like I feel like it's gonna go knowing, knowing WWE's stupid fucking track record. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go over like a wet fart in yep. church. I would I would book Zelina Vega as the crazy queen and just have her run rough shot, right? With like a little entourage of people, right? And that would be cool. That would make that and feel make important. her win a fucking title too. Yeah, make her win the SmackDown because it would it would be nothing if if that didn't happen. Right, it, just, it wouldn't amount to anything. Exactly. Show some. Give Zelina Vega that opportunity to show that fire, to yeah. show that intensity that we know that she can have. Right, and she could pull this off, and it would make this feel important. I mean, you got a spicy Latina here. Let's mm -hmm. just like make it like you know. Mm. And here's the tournament thing, and I think we're really emphasizing this because King of the Ring they've already done well. But the Queen's Crown, the qualifying matches were like three minutes long. Yes. And it but, didn't but, really but give me a as, lot of as, inspiration. As it, as it relates to a tournament, it's not the follow... It's not from beginning to end. The beginning is when you win it. Right. Then you go on from there. Right. It's not the ending. That's the beginning of it. Right. So as long as they book Zelina... To be this big time rough shot main event or crazy with power, like they did with William Regal when he won King of the Ring, right. that made that feel important. Right. Um, they have to do something like that with her. Yeah. Like have her win these titles, win these opportunities, make her give her that platform right. to make that statement. Yeah, and then it will feel important. Like, right. oh shit, who's gonna be in Queen's Crown again? Right. That's what you want. Right. But there's, I just feel like I, I just do don't it. think that's gonna happen. <laughs> um, <coughs> have fucking RK Bro wrestle somebody else, please. Yeah, so that's like, kind come of on. that's kind of the idea. The AJ Styles Omos thing is done. Like that act is over. Mm -hmm. Let them go their separate ways. I, I don't think that Omos... Omos does not need AJ Styles at this point. No. I just don't think he does. I don't think he does either. Unless AJ Styles is going to go for like the United States champion or something, or even the WWE champion now, that'd be fine. Yeah. And at least there would or, be something or have Or have AJ Styles bring on a new person under his wing. He seems to be doing well with bringing up new stars. Right. Being in a tag Oops, team like this. I think it makes sense for him... And I think Omos is at that point now where he's just like, all right, let me fly. Right. Have him have him get, enter into a feud alone. Right. Or, you know, like I said, WWE Champion, have Omos being that, you know, that wild card like they used to instead of just winning the tag team titles. I don't think he needs to be a wild card what anymore. Would you, what would you do with RK-Bro? I, do you, would you do you have anything at least as of right now? I mean, I I, RK Bro? I think that their next opponents need to be Alpha Academy, and mm. here's why: is because those are that's another group of two singles stars who just need to find their way. Have, they were, they, they were don't even winning. have to win the tag team championships, but at least give them enough exposure and TV time so that when they do, when Alpha Academy does go their separate ways, at least they're. 
off off to the races. Actually, no, I, I like that idea. But they were they were winning matches on SmackDown. Have them continue to win big and and see. But but again, have them go for the tag team champions. They don't have to win the tag team champions, but then split them apart because they're they're single stars through and through. Right. I think that they wanted to do the same thing with Montez Ford and um, Angelo Dawkins. And Angelo Dawkins. Eventually, they are going to break that tag team up. There has been talks about this. They're on Raw. Why don't you have them go for the tag team titles? They don't have to. They don't have to win the tag team champions, but allow them a platform to showcase their skills against veterans, and then you split them apart. Exactly. That's exactly. that's that's kind of the trajectory it has to go. Right. Otherwise, AJ Styles and Omos are going to be stuck in tag, tag team, team limbo, limbo forever. Right. I don't want that. I right. want Omos and AJ Styles to do their own things. Right. That's it. Right. Um, this has to be done. I would do oh, some, yes. I would give Mansoor a little more of like some maybe some higher end rivalry. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. It's not gonna happen. These two are gonna continue to feud and they're continue to do some bullshit with right. them. Right. And it sucks because Mansoor showed great fire. Mustafa's good. I think he's gonna be. I think he's out the door though. I think he's out to lunch. Yeah. I think he's done. And Mansoor, I mean. He'll be there for a while. There's definitely something with him. He'll probably be at least oh, yeah. a good mid Carter guy. But, but yeah, Mustafa Ali, he's he's been screwed over by this company a lot. Yeah, he has to be done, man. I would totally be done. Yeah. And we really talked about this one quite a bit. I would do Rollins with a different program. I would have honestly, I would do um I would do Edge Big E. That's what I would go mm-hmm. for now because he just won the, this huge high profile rivalry. Right. And at this point, these two have to be separate again. Because right. Because if they continue to have these matches, what else can they do after Hell in a Cell? Right. Like, that's, that's like, boom, rivalry done kind of match. Right. And then what I'm thinking, too, is maybe at some point in time down the road, have Rollins and Edge team up as a tag team. Right, like what they did with um, Rated RKO. Yeah, exactly. That'd be really cool. Have them, like, have them as a heel tag team yeah, or something. Exactly. That'd be sweet. That'd be, so, that'd be great. Anyways, that's kind of what we got for Crown Jewel. Um, when we come back, though, we're going to discuss briefly the G1. Um, we didn't watch the finals or anything. I watched, I watched, I watched the final match. Oh, you did? Okay. I, I only watched the final match, and I watched but, matches interchange. Yeah, but let's let's talk about it for a little bit before we move on to the main events, so yes. to speak. And um, we'll be right back. Yes. 